Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video, and in today's video, we're gonna talk on the Docker Compose. Now, Docker Compose is a method in the Docker which helps you to have multiple containers and running them at the same time. So before we go ahead further and create that file and stuff, we need to take a little bit brief look into the documentation of Docker Compose. I can understand that most of you might not be familiarizing by just looking into the documentation and figuring it out, but this is a right step. In all of my videos, courses, and tutorial, I try to familiarize students a little bit with the documentation because as you move into the corporate, this is exactly what you'll be doing most of the time studying the documentation. Let's go ahead and take a first look onto the Docker Compose. So again, a quick Google onto the Docker Compose can land you up in this page or you can search on the docs.docker.com slash compose. Pretty friendly URL. Let's go ahead and take a look on that. We are not gonna read too much into it, but a little bit wherever it is necessary. So first and foremost, the Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker application. It's pretty self-explanatory that whenever we need multiple containers and want to run them simultaneously, then we use the Compose as a tool. Now also it is written that with Compose, you use a YAML file to configure your application services. It's almost like strategy that you are making or the rules that you are setting. You set them into a YAML file, which is going to be run through the Docker Compose to create those containers. The rest of the definitions and everything you can read on your own. I think that these are the two most important line that we need to keep in mind. I highly, highly recommend to take a moment, even pause the video and read this entirely. Now moving further. Here we can see that we have a docker-compose.yml or yaml file, which looks like this. The very important thing here is, is the version three. As of now, the Docker Compose uh, is able to recognize a couple of versions of the Docker YAML file. In a lot of tutorials, Medium articles, and a whole bunch of others, you're gonna see that version two is mostly used because that was pretty much common, but now we have got a version three. Not everything has drastically changed, the things have got a little bit simpler in the version three. In the version two, there was more commands and there was more precise definition of what each step was doing, but now it is much more obvious and less words you can say like that. And moving further, we have got a couple of commands so that this is the Docker compose up uh, just You can just ignore the dash D, it is more of a detachment mode and something. Basically, it just frees up your terminal. You can just totally ignore that as of now. So, to, in order to run that uh, multi-container setup, we have got Docker Compose up. And in order to block that, not block is not going to be a great word. In order to turn that off, we use Docker Compose down. These are the two commands that we have to worry about. And now we're gonna talk about the syntax of this. So syntax is here uh, and you can see a lot of words like Redis and stuff. Don't worry, Redis is just an in-memory database. The entire documentation of the Docker actually works with the Redis database instead of MongoDB. But I think instead of discussing all these details here, we can discuss them in more detail in our actual file. So let's go ahead and create a Docker Compose file in our package itself. So here we're going to create the exact same docker compose.yml file. So let's go ahead and click on this new. And this is all lowercase. So docker compose.yml for a YAML file. There we go. Okay. So how do we work in this file? As I said before as well, in every docker file, where you're writing the things matter a lot. The order of operations are performed in exact manner how you actually write them. So first and foremost, we are going to mention the version. There we, if I can write that correct, version, there we go, it's correct. So in that we're going to explicitly mention that there is gonna be a version three, okay. Now make sure you also pay attention that where I'm using the double quotes and where I'm not using it. It's very, very crucial in the Docker Compose file. Also the indentation matters a lot. Consider this almost like Python-ish, but indentation is like everything in the Docker Compose file. We're gonna move on to next line and then we are gonna call these how many containers you want to make sure that these are up and running. The containers are known as services in the Docker Compose world. 
it's not exactly a perfect world to say that how many containers you want because services can be a bit more in the Docker Compose world. But right now, just for understanding, you can simply say how many containers you want and what do you want to call your services. So my first service, make sure you hit a tab there. My first service is gonna be called as my Mongo. I am explicitly saying here my Mongo. I could have said it here Mongo as well, but that actually is gonna skip over one concept that I want to discuss. So please go ahead and call this as my Mongo only. Then we're gonna hit a colon sign, means what do you really want to do in this image? Just by saying that my image name is my Mongo doesn't really mean that it's a Mongo image. We have to explicitly specify that. So hit enter, make sure you hit a tab again, and then by using the image and colon, you mention the name of the image. Now I'm gonna use a quote and then I'm gonna say Mongo. That, this part here that mentioning the image makes that this my Mongo container, this is the name of the container basically, is gonna be fulfilled by image Mongo. If you write it here, something like node, then the my, my Mongo container is gonna be filled up with the node application. So again, you got the point, you got it. Okay, so that is my first container. Then I'm gonna hit enter. One more line, hit enter just for the sake of easy visibility. Make sure you go onto the same indentation level where you are naming all of your containers, just exactly my Mongo. Then I'm gonna call this as my node. Please follow me along. You can just show your creativity in the naming a bit later. Just right now, follow me along. It's a request. So hit the colon. And then we have to, we have mentioned that what is the name of this. So we have mentioned that. We're gonna hit enter. And then again, we are going to hit a tab. Now in the previous one, in the Mongo, we have said that I want to use an image. So pull an image from hub.docker.com. But where should I pull this my node image? Because this is my custom design project. And that is exactly why we have learned the Docker first. I want to build my custom containerized application. In that, instead of using the word image, I'm gonna simply say, I want you to build one. From where you're gonna build one, you have to mention where your Docker file is situated. My Docker file is situated in the current directory. So I'm gonna just simply say dot. Otherwise you can use the relative path like dot slash wherever it is. Pretty easy. Okay, after that, I'm gonna hit one more line enter and I'm gonna simply say ports. Now I have to explicitly mention that what port of my application I want to open it up. And I want to expose these ports so that anybody can reach out to my application. As of now, we have no way. We haven't actually worked on our application so that people can interact through the web browser. Remember the express in the previous version? We are not gonna be doing that as of now, but still, I want to keep the ports open. So hit enter again, put a tab one more time, then you put a dash. Now this dash, you're gonna see a lot. This means a lot of things are coming up, kind of array-ish version. But in this case, I'm gonna just put a double quote here. And I'm gonna simply say, I want to run my application on port 8000. And on the container also, I'm listening onto the port 8000. Again, we have discussed this too many times it really doesn't matter. Now one more thing, very important one. I know this is going too much, but it's fun actually. One more thing. The thing is that I am first creating my Mongo image and then I'm creating my application. If you would have skipped the order or you have reversed the order, that means you have written, it is totally a possibility that you could have uh, cut this up and you could have written this somewhere uh, like here, that is also a possibility. But in that case, you have to explicitly mention in the my nodes, these properties, I would go somewhere, somewhere here, and I'm gonna simply say depends on. There are more properties here in the YAML file. We are gonna discuss them later on. I'm gonna just fix that up, just it was there. So if you're, first and foremost, we are running a container with the Mongo, and then this will be created. But in case you are creating this one first, then you have to explicitly mention in this image that this container is dependent on some another container because otherwise uh, if the MongoDB is not up and running, we're gonna get an error. So you can mention that. So order of your container matters in the case of this one. Okay, so we have talked a lot on this one. I think we definitely deserve a small break and then we are gonna see a little bit more and some of the errors that we have introduced here, I haven't told you that, 
but we have introduced a couple of errors here. We're going to simply resolve these errors and we're gonna just start right from here in the next video. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next one.